Scott Keith DeCandido, and welcome back to The Chronic Rift. Tonight we're going to talk about science fiction and fantasy from the female point of view and see what's being done about the portrayal in the genre. This week's comic in review is not a comic in review at all, but in fact a videotape about comic books. It is called Comic Book Collector, hosted by Frank Gorshin and produced by Blue Flame Products Incorporated. This video is intended to introduce the viewer to the comic book world. It includes a history of the comic book, which is very well done, if incomplete. The years covering World War II and 1965 to 1980 are basically left out. With Judy and I to discuss women in, many aspects of women in fantasy and science fiction are Susan Schwartz, a Nebula and Philip K. Dick Award nominee, author of a dozen books, over 30 short stories, and numerous articles and reviews on science fiction. Jim Frankel, editor, publisher, and packager of science fiction, who's worked with many of the women I just mentioned, and is currently a consultant for both Tor and Macmillan books. And Alice Dowd, the selector of science fiction for the New York Public Library. I think, uh, first of all, that women were there before the 60s. I mean, yes. uh, Andre Norton's been writing mm -hmm. since 1939, and C.L. Moore, though she couldn't write under her own name because she would have been fired from her job at a bank, was writing from the 30s on, too, and so were people like Lee Brackett, who you couldn't tell if that was a man mm -hmm. or a woman. But, um, you know, it, it really has created a, a lot of opportunities for people to, to write about anything. Something that, in was, that was brought up, I noticed in a <coughs> book I read recently, a criticism in science fiction, was that um, a lot of modern authors, um, especially women authors, according to this, author, this writer, I forget who it was, said that, um, there isn't as much science in science fiction. Like, Robert Heinlein had a lot of science in his science fiction. God knows Isaac Asimov has a lot of science in his science yeah. fiction. You don't see it as much in someone like Ursula Le Guin or... Um, Careful now. Or <laughs> <laughs> someone like that who, well, well, who doesn't have a scientific background. I don't background. myself have a science background. What I have is the ability to research and to interview scientists and make sure that when I do physics, it's right. Mm. When I do anthropology, it's right. When I do bioanthropology, I try to get it as right as I can. And still I will get total, yes, this is a nice lady with a PhD in English. What is she doing writing military <laughs> science fiction? What I'm doing is getting nominated for the Phil K. Dick Award. Right. I think what Jim is saying is very definitely true. There have always been women writing it. By the way, I work for a securities firm, and I write under my own name, <laughs> and that much is changed. Losing your job. No, I don't so, think so. Not for that reason. No, uh, I am fortunate in that I am, have total control over what I buy. You know, nobody tells me anything. <laughs> I have a good time with it, and um, I look upon it more as um, speculative fiction. I really buy more than just science fiction, and I've been finding in the stores that there are. They're, they're ranging out into many different areas, and I think the women have sort of expanded science fiction to, I should say, too many areas. Mm -hmm. And when you were talking, the first book that I thought of was Elizabeth Ann Scarborough's um, the Vietnam book, The, the Healer's War. War. I mean, I picked that up as science fiction, not sure. understanding, didn't think what it was. I figured it'd be technology and fighting and all this. And I was just blown away when I read it. To me, that was the first real vision of Vietnam that I saw in a book, you know, as yeah. opposed to reading, you know, uh, battle books or anything like that, and she did such a wonderful job. What I'd job like of to it. say is, next week we're going to deal with what's next with the next generation, and we're going to have, among others, Robert Greenberger, an editor for DC Comics. <laughs>